Okay, I will call the Senate Judiciary Committee to order. Would the Secretary please call the roll? Senator Harris. Here. Senator Orenshaw. Here. Senator Dondera Loop. Here. Senator Wynn. Here. Senator Hansen. Here. Senator Krasner. Here. Senator Stone. Here. Chair Scheibel. Here, please mark all senators present as we are all here. And uh, we have two bill hearings up on our agenda for today. Uh, the first one is a committee bill that I will be presenting to the committee. So I will be handing the gavel over to our vice chair, Senator Harris. The second uh, bill is a bill that Senator Harris is presenting. So she'll be handing the gavel back to me afterwards. Um, and then of course, we'll have public comment as always. And so with that, I will turn it over to vice chair Harris. Thank you, Chair Scheibel. Uh, we will go ahead and open up the hearing for Senate Bill 190 and welcome our esteemed chair uh, to the podium. See, I did it too. Well, thank you so much for having me and hearing um, my, this committee bill. Uh, this is my first presentation in front of Senate Judiciary this year. I'm very happy to be here, and of course, uh, for the record, my name is Melanie Scheibel. I represent Senate District 9 in the very frequently very hot Las Vegas, uh, central and western part of the valley. Um, I'm pleased to come before you and present Senate Bill 190. Uh, this measure is fairly straightforward, and what it does is extends the civil and criminal protections for people who remove children or pets from a vehicle under specific circumstances. So as the committee is likely aware, we already have statutory protections in place uh, against civil liability for law enforcement officers and other emergency responders who render aid to a child who is in danger in a vehicle, but these protections uh, don't include civilians. Um, and on average, every year in the United States, uh, between 1998 and 2022, 37 children died from heat stroke and hot vehicles. 2018 and 2019 were the worst during that time period, when 53 children died in each of those years. Sadly, we've already suffered our first loss in 2023. Last month, a two-year-old boy died from heat stroke in Florida. Regarding pets, the, the statistics are not as well known because these incidents are not reported or tracked in the same way. However, according to the American Veterinary Medical Association, hundreds of pets die from heat exhaustion every year from being left in hot vehicles. I think it's important to recognize that sometimes we don't realize, in fact, I was certainly surprised when I first learned these numbers, how quickly cars can heat up um, even in relatively temperate uh, areas. When the temperature is just 80 degrees outside, it takes only 10 minutes for the internal temperature of the car to reach over 100 degrees. So as you can imagine, when it's 90 or 95 degrees outside, it takes only five minutes for a car to reach over 100 degrees. Even when it's only 70 degrees or 75 degrees outside, in 15 or 20 minutes, the inside of a car can reach over 100 degrees. Um, a child begins to experience symptoms of heat stroke when their internal body temperature reaches about 104 degrees, and uh, they can die at 107 degrees of internal body temperature. So basically the point of this bill is to say that if there is any person in the state of Nevada who encounters a child or a pet in a car that um, is locked and they're worried about that child or that pet safety and they call 911 and they are you know ready to rescue that child or animal from the car they can be rest assured that they will be protected from civil or criminal liability um, in my preparation for this hearing and talking to some of you and other colleagues i think that um, the resounding consensus was that any one of us would already do that um, and that there is no uh, law enforcement agency in the state that would prosecute somebody for that and probably no court that would find somebody liable for breaking a window or um, uh, forcing open a door to rescue a pet or a child. However, in my personal experience, I have had this conversation with numerous clients, friends, and colleagues about the dangers of leaving an animal or a child in the car. Of course, with children, it's uh, generally accidental. With pets, it's more often intentional, and people just don't realize how quickly cars heat up. And the conversation that I've had numerous times about what would you do in that situation, um, people do express some hesitancy to me 
probably because I'm an attorney in criminal law, uh, that they would be at fault or responsible for the damages or something if they were to break somebody else's window, pry open somebody else's door to rescue their pet. So the purpose of this bill is to put it into statute so that um, I and hopefully all of you can spread the message far and wide to anybody who might find themselves in this situation encountering an animal or a child stuck in a hot car that they do not have to worry about being held criminally or civilly liable for doing the right thing and rescuing that child or animal. With that, um, I'll walk through the bill very quickly. It is very simple. Section 1 expands the protections to any person, including law enforcement or other first responders, who use reasonable means to protect a child who is in danger. They have to meet all of the following criteria first. They have to determine that the vehicle is locked and there's no other reasonable way to protect the child or remove the child from the vehicle. They have to report the situation to law enforcement or another first responder via 911 or other means like flagging them down if they're nearby. And they have to remain with the child or pet in a safe place near the vehicle until informed by law enforcement or another first responder that, the, responder that their presence is no longer necessary. Uh, they also have to cooperate with law enforcement or any other first responder who renders age renders aid. Section 2 of the bill essentially repeats these provisions in regard to a person who rescues a pet in, a, in danger in a vehicle, and this section also takes note of the fact that an animal control officer or other governmental employee whose primary responsibility is to ensure public safety may be involved in rendering aid to the pet. In other words, it might be a different agency that responds to a pet in a car than a child in a car. Section 3 of the bill provides that these provisions are applicable um, on or after July 1st of this year, and the effective date is set out in Section 4. Um, I am very lucky to be joined today by Jeanette uh, Farrell, I hope I pronounced that right, an expert in this field, uh, to give you a, a couple more statistics on the importance of this kind of legislation, and then we will both be available to answer any questions. Thank you for joining us. Go ahead and begin whenever you're ready. Well, good afternoon, and um, thank you so much for spending some time today to learn more about this um, topic. My name is Jeanette Fennell, and I am testifying on behalf of Kids in Car Safety, which is a national nonprofit organization, and we're dedicated to keep children and pets safe in and around motor vehicles. Kids in Car Safety is a passionate proponent of um, SB 190 which we refer to as a Good Samaritan Bill. The significance of this bill isn't just about protecting citizens from liability, but more importantly, to ensure that nobody's afraid to take action when a child's life is at stake, because this bill would empower citizens to get involved when it really matters the most. It's a Car Safety is the only organization that maintains a national database on these type of incidents of children and pets being alone in, left alone in vehicles. Children are at risk every single day across the entire state of Nevada. Tragically, over 1,000 children in the United States have died in hot cars since 1990, and 17 of those have taken place in Nevada. There are an additional, at least, 76 children who have been documented that are, that are alone in hot cars but did not die. It's not just heat that presents a danger to children. We have documented incidents in Nevada where children have knocked vehicles into gear, found matches and died by fire in the car, strangled by a power window, and even shot themselves when they found a gun in that vehicle. And what keeps me up at night is wondering how many of these children would still be alive today and could have been saved had someone intervene. I want to share um, just a real quick story with about a dear friend of mine. She lost her beautiful daughter in a hot car in 2010. Years later, later, she learned that not one, but two people had walked by her van that day and saw her baby in the back seat, but did nothing. What's even more tragic is this is not an isolated incident. Kids in Car Safety knows of many fatal incidents where a passerby saw the child inside a vehicle and did nothing. These are the type of oversights that, of course, should never have happened. We want the public to be encouraged to get involved. The consequences of doing nothing can and has been. 
just so everyone knows, the inside of a vehicle acts like a greenhouse and it heats up very quickly. And the other part people don't realize is most of the heat um, starts going up within 10 minutes. So in, 10, in the first 10 minutes, let's say it's an 85 degree day, in 10 minutes, the inside of that car temperature will be 104, which is in most cases not survivable. Now add that with the fact that a child's um, body temperature rises three to five times faster than that of an adult. And you put these things together and of course it is a recipe for disaster. And some people say, well, just wait for, you know, the first responders to, to, um, to come and, and help. Well, the few minutes that it takes first responders to arrive could mean the difference between life or death or severe brain damage and lifelong disabilities. This is why it is so important for people to act immediately. I've been working to keep kids safe in and around motor vehicles for over 28 years now. And um, every day I work with parents who have buried a child. And there, as you can understand, there's nothing worse in the whole wide world that could ever happen. So it's really important if we can get the state of Nevada to pass the Good Samaritan law and um, intervene and help save our precious little children. Again, I want to thank you for your time and helping to make Nevada a safer place for our children. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you so much, Ms. Fennell, for joining us. Uh, Chair Scheibel, if that concludes your presentation, we'll open it up to committee members for questions. Senator Orenshaw. Thank you, Vice Chair Harrison. Thank you, Chair Scheibel, for presenting the bill. I guess a little bit of a statement, a little bit of a question. I really like the bill. Thank you for bringing it. Assuming this passes into law, do you think that there will be any effort made to educate Nevadans that the law has changed and that anyone who's fearful that they might be breaking a law or civil immunity that there might be some kind of you know, public information campaign I know that's not part of this bill maybe maybe it would happen you know tangentially to this bill becoming law just so that people would know if they were fearful about breaking the law to not get involved they would not step aside Melanie Scheibel for the record, and yes, that is part of the impetus for this, is wanting to uh, spread broader awareness about the dangers of hot cars and wanting to make sure that we have that stopgap on the backside of it. So even if, you know, the poster that we put out or the billboard that we buy simply says, rescue kids from hot cars, you know, it reaches 100 degrees on an 85 degree day and doesn't explicitly say you can break the window. We want to make sure that the answer to that follow-up question is, will I be in trouble if I break the window? No. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Vice Chair. Additional questions from committee members. Senator Stone. Thank you, Senator, for bringing this forward. This is a very important bill. Um, my wife and I have actually encountered situations like this with a child even, and uh, we've certainly seen uh, documentaries where I, I can't understand how this, this can happen. There was a gentleman that was uh, going to work and was to drop his kid off at preschool and forgot his kid was in the car. So she either died from uh, heat exhaustion or oxygen deprivation, right? So uh, I'm 100% uh, in favor of the bill, but just we sometimes we have to play the devil's advocate with the bill. So tell me, um, with a child, it's, it's, it's a no-brainer. You bust the window, you grab the child, Thank God you saved the child's life. But you could be accounting a car that has not maybe one canine, but maybe two canines and large canines that are already stressed because it's hot in the car, they can't breathe and they're snapping and you open the door and they, they either snap at you and, and bite you and hurt you, or maybe one or two of these canines jump out of the car, get hit by another car or get lost. What are the immunities for the person that tried to save these canines lives, but unfortunately it didn't happen as happily as rescuing a child? Uh, Melanie Scheibel, for the record, um, are you considering writing questions for the bar exam? Because that sounds like an excellent hypothetical that, um, you know, would certainly have to be played out in either a lawsuit or a court of law or even with an insurance company. Um, generally, I would say this doesn't affect the liabilities in, in other situations. Um, 
or, you know, as far as what happens after the animal is rescued from the car and whether or not that person has a duty to protect the animal from other cars or protect themselves from a dog bite, things like that would be governed by the laws already in place for, for those particular instances. And I will also point out that we do have these kinds of events occurring already. Um, I did I talked to our law enforcement officers before I presented the bill, and they've been called out to not only cars, but people who've grabbed an animal from um, the side of a road and called and said, hey, I have this dog. And so um, we don't see uh, massive amounts of litigation surrounding people who are saving other people's animals. And I'm not really concerned that this will change that. Appreciate it. And I will add that uh, we have a uh, Labrador retriever, her name is Velvet, that was uh, turned in after being let go on a freeway in Prescott, Arizona. So people do some horrific things to our animals. And again, I thank you for bringing this forward. Please bring her to committee. Uh, additional questions from the committee? Sure. Uh, Senator Dondero-Loop. If I can find my buttons. Thank you very much, Madam uh, Vice Chair. Um, so what happens if I'm a parent or a grandparent, whatever, I have a baby in my car or a child in my car, I've locked my keys in my car, but I don't want to break my windows. And somebody else comes up and says, but you have to break your windows. And I argue with them. Now, I realize I'm not being rational, but what happens then if the person is actually standing there? Uh, Melanie Scheibel, for the record, uh, this is a great question. Thank you. And uh, the bill does not require anybody to take any particular action. It simply protects them from liability if they do. And so um, kind of going back to Senator Orenshaw's question about a public awareness campaign, I think that it is very reasonable to expect and ask people to uh, take other measures first. You look around. You, you try to assess, is the person responsible standing right next to you. And in that case, you know, I would suggest that the person who wants to rescue the baby from the car could call 911 and, you know, let law enforcement officers deal with that situation because it is a child's safety that is at risk. Um, and again, nothing in the bill requires you to take any particular action. It just protects you if you do. And so I would even go as far as to say, you know, I mean, I'm a pretty bold person if I was in that situation and this fight went on long enough, I would bust somebody's window right in front of their face to save their child, and then I would answer to law enforcement for it. Um, other people might choose not to do that, and they wouldn't be held responsible for that choice either. This gives, you know, a good Samaritan, be they overzealous or not, some, uh, some re reasonable protections in the law. You know, not over... I said overzealous, but we're, we're trying to put those reasonable protections in by making sure that the car is actually locked and they take reasonable measures and they do contact 911. Okay, thank you very much. I, I believe there was a case in Clark County that was similar to that, and um, none of the windows got broken by anyone, even law enforcement or EMTs. I can't remember who was there. And so I was just concerned because I can't imagine that all unfolding and somebody not saying I'm going to save this kid instead of the car, but that's why I'm asking that. So, you know, when is it that somebody has to take, if there's not a you or a me there, right? When is it, and it's not in this bill, that somebody has to save that child's life, who, by the way, is strapped into a seat and cannot do it? Melanie Shabba, for the record, correct. This is not um, placing an affirmative obligation on anybody to act. It's protecting the people who do. All right. Any additional questions? Okay. Uh, Chair Shabba will go ahead and move on to the testimony portion of the hearing. If there's anyone here uh, in Carson City in support of Senate Bill 190, please go ahead and fill the seats. Ladies first, Mr. Vanderpool. 
Thank you so much, Vice Chair Harris and members of the committee. My name is Leanne McAllister. I am the Executive Director of the Nevada Chapter of the American Academy of Pediatrics. Thank you, Senator Scheibel, for bringing attention to this very important issue. Um, it is not safe, as you heard, to leave a child in a car for any length of time. Um, and we do encourage people, if you see an unattended child in a car and you're concerned, please immediately call 911 for guidance. Um, a child left in a hot car can die of heat stroke very quickly, as you as you heard, and um, actually, heat stroke is the leading cause of non-crash vehicle-related deaths in children under 15. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Erin Schaefer, E-R-I-N-S-H-A-F-F-E-R, -F -F -E and I'm a student at the University of Nevada, Reno, and I am testifying in support of SB 190. As one who is originally from Southern California, I understand how very seriously how fast cars can heat up and how unsafe it can be for anyone or any pet to be left in a turned off car for more than a few minutes. Creating immunity to protect those who care deeply for saving one's life, whether it be an animal or a child, is the correct action to take. As a student who carries a passion for giving back to the community, animals and children to de deserve to be saved if seen in a hot car. Whether it be a child or a small pet, such as a cat, dog, goat, or any other animal that may be found in the great state of Nevada, deserves the chance to be saved safely. Thank you. Good afternoon, Vice Chair, members of the committee. For the record, Nick Vanderpool with Flynn Judice Government Affairs here today on behalf of the Nevada Humane Society. Joining us over the phone, um, CEO Greg Hall will be calling in, but we want to express our support and appreciate uh, Senator Scheibel for this piece of legislation. Thank you. Good afternoon, Madam Vice Chair, members of the committee. For the record, my name is Cadence Matijevic, representing Washoe County. Uh, we are here in support of the bill. We thank Senator Scheibel for bringing it. Uh, Senator Orenshaw, to your question about public information campaigns, uh, Washoe County every year does public information campaigns both about uh, from our human services agency about kids and our regional animal service agency about not, not leaving ki kids and animals in hot cars. And so uh, we would likely update that information. We'll need to do it midsummer this summer based on on the effective date of the bill, um, but we, we would absolutely look to be sure that members of our community uh, knew that this new legislation existed uh, and, and maybe remove any hesitation that someone might have from taking action in a case where, as you heard, minutes do matter. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Deshaun Jackson, D-A-S-H-U-N-J-A-C-K-S-O-N. I serve as the Safety and Welfare Policy Director with the Children's Advocacy Alliance. Uh, the Children's Advocacy Alliance stands in support of uh, SB 190. We believe that it is important uh, to have these saf safety measures in place and to make sure that those that are protecting children and animals um, are exempt from liability. So thank you so much. <laughs> Good afternoon, Senator Harris, members of the committee, Jason Walker, Washoe County Sheriff's Office, uh, testifying in support of Senate Bill 190. Thank you. Vice Chair Harris and the Senate Committee on Judiciary. My name is Chris Reese, R-I-E-S, representing the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. We support uh, SB 190 and thanks, Senator Scheibel. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Chair Harris, members of the Senate Judiciary Committee. My name is John Jones here on behalf of the Nevada District Attorneys Association, and we are also here in support. Thank you. Okay, um, I don't see anyone in Las Vegas to testify, and so BPS, would you mind checking the phones to see if there's anyone who'd like to testify in support of SB 190? Thank you, Vice Chair. If you would like to offer testimony in support of SB 190, please press star 9 now to take your place in the queue. Caller with the last three digits, 805, you are unmuted and may begin. Good afternoon. I am Greg Hall, CEO of Nevada Humane Society. Thank you, Chair Scheibel and the Committee for Senate Bill 190. Nevada Humane Society operates two no-kill shelters in northern Nevada and provides assistance to pets and their owners throughout the state. Uh, Nevada Humane Society strongly supports Senate Bill 190, which enhances the protection for children and pets 
left in motor vehicles during periods of extreme heat or cold created six years ago in Senate Bill 409. Studies have shown that temperature is dangerous to children and pets can form within minutes in motor vehicles and time is of the essence when taking action to safeguard the health and welfare of these pets. We believe that this bill is an important additional step in protecting these vulnerable children and animals, and we urge all members of the Nevada legislature to support Senate Bill 190. Thank you very much. Thank you, Vice Chair. There are no other callers wishing to offer a testimony and support at this time. Okay, thank you. Um, anyone here in Carson City like to testify in opposition to Senate Bill 190? All right, not seeing anyone. Uh, still no one in Las Vegas. And BPS, can we just uh, check the phones quickly to see if there's anyone who'd like to testify in opposition to SB 190? Thank you. If you would like to offer a testimony in opposition to SB 190, please press star 9 now to take your place in the queue. Thank you, Vice Chair. There are no other callers at this time. All right, we'll go ahead and move to neutral testimony. Anyone here in Carson City want to testify in the neutral position on Senate Bill 190? All right, no one in Las Vegas either. And I'm going to take a guess as to what you're going to say, but we'll check the phones anyway. Thank you, Vice Chair. If you would like to offer testimony, or sorry, neutral testimony for SB 190, please press star 9 now to take your place in the queue. There are no callers wishing to offer neutral testimony at this time. All right, Chair Scheibel, if you'd like to make any closing remarks, please. Thank you. Melanie Scheibel, for the record, representing Senate District 9. I forgot to mention that this is, in fact, Children's Week at the legislature, and this day, Thursday, is Children's Safety Day. So I think this bill is both timely and smart, so I look forward to working with you on it. Okay, with that, we will close the hearing on Senate Bill 190, and I will turn the gavel uh, back over to its proper chair. All right. Um, Thank you again, Chair Harris, or Vice Chair Harris, for serving as chair and allowing me to present SB 190. We will now uh, open up the hearing on SB 211. Uh, good afternoon, committee members. Um, my name is Dallas Harris. I represent District 11. Uh, starting to feel a bit like the tag team and that I'm back again. Um, happy to be with you to present Senate Bill 211. This is a fairly simple bill. The first, uh, and uh, to me anyway, most important section, puts in place a process for someone who gets their name changed through a court order to then go back and get a marriage certificate that reflects that new name. The second section, uh, which I will um, also have our Clark County recorder speak to, Kirk, clerk. Who knows the difference between a clerk and a recorder, anybody? Yeah, okay, the clerk, okay, <laughs> sorry. The Clark County clerk, who we all know does probably more marriages than uh, any jurisdiction in the country, um, to explain the second section, which really uh, repeals some action that we took in 2017. Initially, we thought it might be nice for folks to be able to decide to take uh, their new name and have that put on the marriage certificate itself. However, turns out that has absolutely no effect of law. You still have to go to the DMV, uh, you show them your certificate, and they change your name. The process remains the same, but it has raised a lot of consternation for folks who, when they get to the window, realize they have this option and maybe haven't decided or haven't had that conversation quite yet. They hem and they haw, uh, holding up the ability of the 
clerk's office uh, to do the amount of transactions uh, that they need to do and the time they need to do them. And further, if people change their mind, they then want to go back and amend that certificate to put on the name that they actually chose uh, to take after marriage. And so we're going to take that off, uh, take that process off of the piece of paper itself, uh, make it a little bit easier for the Clark County Clerk's Office uh, to conduct the volume of business that they conduct. Uh, and Madam Chair, if it's okay with you, I'll go ahead and turn it over uh, to our Clark County Clerk uh, to discuss that issue a little bit more, and then I will speak to the very, very short amendment. Thank you, committee members and Chair Scheibel. Um, Lynn Marie Goya, Clark County Clerk, speaking for my office as uh, the Clark County Clerk for the record. Uh, as Senator Harris said, this bill would repeal Section 6, which um, allows the couple to put a new married name on their marriage certificate. The problem has become that the DMV is required to use that name that's on the marriage certificate and sometimes the couples no longer want to do that after they left the clerk's office. So um, I have a, a statement that we have given you for uh, more details. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them, but we think that it would save time and money and consternation if we just deleted section six. So my comments have been submitted for the record and I'd be happy to answer any questions. And with that, Chair, if it's okay, I'll just walk through the amendment very briefly. Uh, it makes a couple of changes to the bill. First, it clarifies that that court order can be issued in any state the way that it was originally drafted and may have been construed to require uh, that you get a court order for your name change in this state. Uh, we all know people uh, come to Las Vegas, get married, they go home uh, to where they actually live, or uh, people are very transient here in this state, and so maybe they move away and get a name change in another state, uh, but we'll need to come back here uh, to Nevada in order to get that amendment. So we wanted to make sure that it was clear to you that you could get that order in any state. Uh, it also changes the name corrected certificate to an amended certificate. Uh, we already have a process for correcting your marriage certificate when there is an actual error. And so they uh, do a corrected certificate, and then that corrected certificate can sometimes replace the original certificate. We're not looking to do that here. We're having an amended certificate that would also be uh, in the file with the original certificate. And so just a bit of uh, nomenclature there. Um, and then uh, I wanted to make sure that uh, this worked for the entire state, although in Clark County we have the clerk doing marriages. There are counties in the state where the recorder is the one that actually records and maintains the documents. And so there, were, um, there was one section where I needed to add or recorder or county recorder. And then lastly, uh, because you guys know me well, I added the Oxford comma where clearly appropriate. Ready for questions, Madam Chair, thank you. All right, questions from members of the committee. Senator Hansen. Thanks, Madam Chair. Okay, what's the difference between a recorder and a clerk? <laughs> I, th I think I know, but I want to find out. Uh, the clerk often, uh, I'm sorry, Lynn Marie Goya for the record. The clerk often takes over a lot of um, duties that, that are different from county to county. Um, for me, almost all of the clerks do the public records for the commissions and chair and for the, I'm sorry, for the county commission and boards. Um, and then we also run the Marriage License Bureau and issue licenses. Only in Clark does the clerk actually accept the marriage certificates. The recorder records the certificates in other counties and they also do land deeds and those kinds of things. So the recorder is much more defined. The clerk can kind of take over anything that nobody else wants to do. Good, I'm learning. Thank you, Madam Chair. Senator Stone. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Senator Harris, you, you mentioned some very important words where clearly appropriate. What would be some examples of inappropriate uh, actions? Uh, Senator Stone, there are uh, lots of excessive use of commas. I would suggest that a series where you put a comma be after the last item in the series and before the and is always appropriate. 
Okay. But can you give me an example of what would maybe be an inappropriate uh, case for a clerk recorder to say, no, this is not going to suffice under this bill? <laughs> Senator Harris, for the record, Senator Stone, are you referring to adding Oxford commas to marriage certificates? Or can you clarify the question, please? The, the question is, um, you, you put where clearly appropriate for a name change. And, I'm and, it. and Senator Stone, yeah. I'll have to clarify. That's my fault. Dallas Harris, for the record. Uh, I added Oxford commas to the bill oh, okay. where appropriate. Got it. Okay. Thank you for that clarification from a non-attorney, for me being an attorney. All right. Any other questions from the committee? I'm not seeing any. So we will move to testimony in support of SB 211. Anybody wishing to give testimony in person in Las Vegas or Carson City is invited to the table to do so now. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair, and thank you, Senate Judiciary. I haven't been here this year in person testifying. I'm Kimberly Surratt. I am the Domestic Lobbying Chair for the Nevada Justice Association. I'm also a private attorney. I am very much in support of this bill. I have lots of examples of times I've needed this bill, and despite having a court order, still couldn't get an amended certificate, yet the need for it. And on the second part of the uh, amendments and the changes uh, in order to not force you to designate your, your name at the time of the licensing, I have a personal example, but I'm not going to waste your time. If anybody wants those examples, I'm happy to testify as to them. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chair Scheibel and members of the committee. Jeff Rogan from Clark County. We are obviously in support of this bill, and we urge that you support it as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. I don't see anybody coming to the table in uh, Las Vegas or anybody else in Carson City, so we will go to the phones for testimony in support of SB 211. Thank you, Chair. If you would like to testify in support of SB 211, please press star 9 now to take your place in the queue. Hello, this is Elsie Rayford. I'm the Deputy Director for Silver State Equality, uh, Nevada's LGBTQ plus civil rights organization. Uh, we're just calling in to support Senator Harris's Senate Bill 211. We'd appreciate a good vote. Thank you. Thank you, Chair and members of the Nevada Senate Judiciary Committee. My name is Wynn Tashman. I'm speaking today representing myself in support of SB 211. Uh, ultimately, I would like to testify in support of this because as it stands, it will help all people wanting their marriage certificate to accurately reflect their name. And uh, this is one of the final holdouts remaining in Nevada that can't be changed after a court-approved name change. Um, and I believe that I've personally witnessed community members' concerns about wanting to do this and needing this type of legislative advocacy when encountering a systemic barrier. So I'm proud to support this today and thank you for your vote. Thank you, Chair. There are no other callers to offer testimony at this time. All right, thank you. We will move to testimony in opposition to SB 211. Anybody wishing to give testimony in uh, Carson City or Las Vegas is invited to the table now. Go ahead whenever you're ready. Good afternoon, Madam Chair and committee members. For the record, Shawnee Guerin, Douglas County Recorder, speaking in opposition to Senate Bill 211 on behalf of the Recorders Association of Nevada. We would like to thank Senator Harris for working with us to address some of the procedural concerns um, and newly found out the, uh, the change of the word corrected to amended. Um, as presented. We do, however, have outstanding procedural concerns and substantive concerns regarding this bill in its current form. Today, I would like to take a moment to help those who may not fully understand the role of the recorder. The, re the role of the recorder is one of a fiduciary. 
that is intended first and foremost as set forth throughout NRS 247 to preserve and protect the documents put on record in our offices and to make them available for public inspection upon request. In other words, our role is to, is to protect the integrity of the records on file with us. The proposed language in SB 211 creates an instance for historic and permanent records to be altered in a way that does a disservice to this vital role. The intent of a marriage certificate has not historically been to prove or determine identity. Rather, it is a record that documents an event that occurred between specific parties on a given date at a stated location. To the extent that a uh, record contains an error, procedure already exists to correct them. The proposed language in SB 211 would inherently and substantively change or amend a record as was clarified, not correct it. The substantive concerns surrounding such changes are as follows. SB 211 allows an applicant without consent from their spouse or firm, former spouse to substantively alter the marriage records of the couple. Additionally, SB 211 allows an applicant to substantively amend another person's signed certification. A marriage certificate is the officiant's certification of an event stating, per statute, this is to certify that the undersigned officiant did join or rejoin as the case may be in lawful wedlock the identified individuals, per NRS 122.120. SB 211 allows a person to substantively alter the certification without consent from the undersigned officiant. I am unaware of any other example in which the law authorizes one person without, to, without notice or authorization, alter the certification of another. I thank you for your time and consideration. We do look forward to working with each of the bill sponsors and various stakeholders to work towards addressing these concerns and co accomplishing the goal of providing a meaningful solution to our constituents and visitors alike who have chosen our beautiful state as their chosen destination for their special day while maintaining the role and expectations of marriage officiants and recorders across the state. Thank you. All right, I don't see anybody else coming to the table in opposition, so we'll go to the phone for testimony in opposition to SB 211. If you would like to offer a testimony in opposition to SB 211, please press star 9 now to take your place in the queue. There are no callers wishing to offer opposition testimony at this time. All right, then we'll go to testimony in neutral. Um, anybody wishing to give neutral testimony is invited to the table, and I don't see anybody in Las Vegas or Carson City, so we'll go to the phone for testimony in neutral. If you would like to offer a neutral testimony to SB 211, please press star 9 now to take your place in the queue. There are no callers wishing to offer a neutral testimony. All right, then that brings us to the conclusion of testimony. I'll invite the sponsor back up to make some closing comments. Thank you so much, uh, Madam Chair. I just want to um, offer a couple of points in response to uh, some of the opposition that we heard. So the way the bill is drafted, it requires the original certificate to be retained. And that is because we do not want to go back and change the historical record. That is not the goal of this bill. Um, I will also note that there is uh, plenty of precedent for getting a court order for a name change and changing records that we all consider pretty final, including your birth certificate. Uh, it should not be easier to change your name on your birth certificate than on your marriage certificate. Uh, we raise the uh, point that it's not used for identification. And that's right, that's correct. To me, that's, that's more of a reason why this is less of a big deal. This is about someone who is making a choice, they've changed their name, and they want that marriage certificate to reflect who they are. So we're not really changing the whole world here. Um, and I understand the recorder's hesitancy because they do a great job of recording things and then not messing with them and keeping them preserved. 
this would allow an amended certificate to be filed and tied with that original record uh, without changing any of the his history uh, moving backwards. So I'm trying to offer folks an avenue that is modeled after uh, other ways that we change vital records in this state. Uh, and I think this bill has walked that line. I appreciate the committee's time. Uh, thank you so much, Madam Chair and committee members. Thank you for presenting us another wonderful bill, Senator Harris. And with that, I will uh, close the hearing on SB 211. That takes us to the end of our uh, bill hearings for today and takes us to public comment. If there's anybody wishing to give public comment e in person, either in Carson City or Las Vegas, now is the time to come to the table. Not seeing anybody, we'll go to the phones. Thank you, Chair. If you would like to offer public comment today, please press star nine now to take your place in the queue. Chair, there are no callers wishing to offer public comment at this time. All right, then that brings us to the conclusion of our meeting. Uh, we will not be meeting tomorrow. Tomorrow is Friday. It is also St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. We will be meeting on Monday at 1 p.m. Um, so have a safe weekend. Um, and until then. Oh, and apparently the thumping sound is construction. And no, we can't get it to stop. All we can do is stop our meeting. So we are adjourned.